mark and do the mark account and then the Matthew account. Uh, but it, I, I thought about all the years here and then uh, and then the years in Murfreesboro and all of the times that we have looked at this on sunrise service that never grows old. It does seem like that each time the, the words just even sometimes you know when you read you see something you've never really noticed or the Lord impresses that into your heart. Sometimes just reading just reading the same story over and nothing new comes off the pages, but they still come alive. It's come alive to you. We praise the Lord for that. So Gospel of Mark, chapter sixteen. <clears throat> And when the Sabbath was passed, and I always want to point that out, that we don't meet on the Sabbath. It's okay if we meet on Saturday, Friday evening to Saturday evening. It's okay if we meet on the Sabbath. <coughs> but we don't, that's not the day that we meet as a church, as a group to gather together. Here's why. And when the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome have brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. They came to do what they could. <laughs> it may not be much, but they came to do what they could. He was taken down very hastily from the cross. His body was, as we know, was washed and cleansed by two very wealthy men, I can imagine, because all... Because these men were both evidently members of the Sanhedrin. They would have had on their white robes. And how, how bloody a deal that must have been to take a, a, a dead body from a cross. But these ladies are coming to do what they can do now. That's a good advice for us. A good example for us. We may not be able to do what Joseph or Arimathea did. We don't have the financial means. But here came these women to do what they could. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, <clears throat> they came to the sepulcher at the rising of the sun. <clears throat> and they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? No thought at all of a resurrection. That was not even in their mind. Who can roll away the stone? As we'll see in the book of Matthew, they didn't realize that a guard had been put there. They had no ideal about that. We'll talk about that in a few minutes. <clears throat> but they come with this thought, the thought of the resurrection. And when they looked, and if you have a, another translation, it may have the other word there, up. It's, a, it's a implied in the Greek. They looked up because they had their eyes down early in the morning. As you know, you look down while you're walking. You don't want to Stumble and fall. They're carrying spices. <clears throat> but they looked up. I suppose this is probably the time that the earthquake must have happened and all of Jerusalem was awakened. And they saw the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. The other gospels tell us that an angel sat on that stone. And entering into the sepulcher, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in, long white, in a long white garment. They were frightened. Sometimes I think that Mark is just the king of understatement. They saw an angel of God. He looked as just as pleasant as a young man. I don't know how the Roman soldiers beheld him. I know they started quaking, literally just shaking all over, fell down like dead men. But he's not as scary to these women. They've come there to do the body no harm. He looks as a, as a young man in just glistening garment. He said unto them, Be not afraid. You see, Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. Here it is. He is risen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's what's written on the garden tomb. You go to Jerusalem, they'll take you to the Holy Sepulcher, uh, where they say the body of Christ must have laid. Then there's the garden tomb where they say the body of Christ. All I know is I've been to both tombs. Both of them are empty. Both of them are empty. Unlike Confucius and unlike uh, 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 Muhammad or any of the other religious leaders or Buddha who's in a little pot in one of the temples, uh, our Savior is risen from the dead. Hallelujah. 
He is not here to behold the place where he laid. But go your way and tell his disciples and Peter. Mark especially always points out the things about Peter, probably because Peter was like a mentor to Paul. I mean, to, uh, Peter was like a mentor to Mark. Go tell his disciples and Peter. And Peter had failed the Lord. The last thing that Peter had ever done is as far as he knew, as Christ was alive, was denied him three times. That he goeth before you into Galilee, there you shall see him, as he said unto you. Now we know that he, they actually see him in Jerusalem before this day is over. They went quickly, went out quickly and fled the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. They were they were not stopping to talk to people. They were not giving a long Jewish greeting of shalom and the shalom and the shalom. They're just, they're going as fast as they can to go back and tell the apostles that he's risen. Now when Jesus was risen early the first day of the week, Mark starts putting some things in order for us. He appeared first to Mary Magdalene out of whom he cast seven <laughs> devils. That's in the Gospel of John. That, that'll be the person I want to this morning in the worship service spend the time with her and the resurrected Savior, what happened that morning. But can you imagine having seven demons? Can you imagine having a demons? We cannot be demon-possessed, but demons do oppress us every day. They do not want us to be successful. They want us to fail. But thank God for the warriors of God. His angels are kept about us this morning. Yes. They rode with us in the car. They're here with us right now. We can't see them. But they're here with us. Thank God for that. But she, seven demons, she, 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 she could not even see the light because her own body was possessed with demons. And, and she went and told them that had been with them as they mourned and wept. Here's a verse I wanted to get to. And they, and they, when they had heard that he was alive and had been seen of her, believed not. This is the apostles. <laughs> this, the, these are the men of God that work miracles. They had the power to cast out demons. Remember Jesus had given them all those powers as they went and spread the gospel with him. They've been given these pow this power that seen the miracles, that seen Jesus raise the dead. Not just someone who had been dead a few hours. But they saw him raise Lazarus from the dead just a few weeks before this. And it says, aren't you glad that it says that? They believed not. They were suffering so bad. They were hurting so. They were so lonely. We're not told not to mourn. We're just told not to mourn like those that have no hope. But they did. They, they did not believe the resurrection story, even though someone that had seen him testified to them. Go back to Matthew with me, and them, and see a little different. All the accounts match up, but the. Matthew gives us some information that Mark doesn't give, and Mark gives some information that Matthew doesn't give. I'm going to start in verse 62. This is the... Now the next day, following the day of preparation, Where are you? Uh, Matthew chapter uh, 27, verse 62. Oh. Now the next day that followed the day of preparation, the chief priests and the Pharisees came to, together in the pile. So, <clears throat> these two groups would not normally be together. This is... So Jesus has been nailed on the cross <clears throat> and they had taken him down the Passover day. And then when that day had ended, so this would be late Saturday evening. Now the women didn't know about this. The last time they had seen the body of Jesus, he had been placed into the tomb and the stone was put in place, I suppose, by Joseph Sparimathea and Nicodemus or maybe their servants because they were both very wealthy men. But unbeknownst to them, this is the background that Matthew knows that the other Gospels don't record for us. Saying, sir, they're very polite to Pilate today, aren't they? We remember that that deceiver said, while he was yet alive, after three days I will rise again. By God's sovereignty, they remember that because Jesus' own apostles don't remember that, do they? They do later. But these religious leaders believe that. And command, therefore, that the sepulcher may be sure, made sure until the third day, 
lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people that he is risen from the dead. So the last error shall be worse than the first. And Pilate said unto them, You have a watch. You have 16 men, a trained Roman soldiers. A watch would be a particular group of Roman soldiers, very well trained, like we would call special forces today. You have a watch. Go your way. And I love what Pilate says. Make it as sure as you can. Because Pilate had been told by his wife, have nothing to do with this man. Remember all these, because I've suffered many things because of them this day in a dream. Pilate had seen the, the sun refuse to shine the day before. His state, her, her, had the earthquake and the bell of the temple been rent from top to bottom. All this news had made it to him. So he says, go. He's uneasy about it. Mm. Make it as sure as you can. So they went and made the sepulcher sure, at least in their own minds. Sealing the stone and setting a watch. I wrote down the words of that old song that we sing many times on Resurrection Day. Vainly they watch the dead. <laughs> they watch the dead. Okay, now we come to the resurrection. And in the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the, to the, see the sepulcher. Behold, there was a great earthquake. So now all of Jerusalem is awake. A great earthquake. This was no small thing. In fact, the Apostle Paul said years later, these things were not done in a corner. These things are well known by the Roman government. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven, came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. <laughs> Whoever this angel is, only one angel got to do this. Of all the angels in glory, this angel was assigned to do this. The stone was rolled away. John says it's not even sitting at the mouth of the tomb. And this angel is sitting on that stone. That's a good job for an angel. And his countenance was like lightning. His raiment was as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers, remember the whole keep, the keepers did shake and become as dead men. I thought, they must have, they must have thought the night before when Pilate, or the day before when Pilate says, you have this job, make sure this dead man does not escape. Well, that's the easiest job we've ever had. So then there's 16, they're well trained, all these things. We're not going to go into detail, but you can look up what a watch was and how, how, how well trained these men were. They did shake and become as dead men. In my mind, I think about like the three stooges. I just think about blah, 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 they're just shaking and falling down. And, and this angel that Mark said looked at the women as a young man, very terrifying to these men, answered and said unto the women, Fear ye not ye. For I know that you seek Jesus, which was crucified. You have nothing to fear from me. You don't have to be like these soldiers. You don't have to fall. They're, they're, they're shaky. They're afraid. But this angel says, you don't have to be afraid. He is not here. Here it is again. For he is risen. He is risen. As he said. And come and see the place where the Lord lay. Go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. Behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. Thou shalt you see him, and lo, I have told you. Sometimes you see the word behold. Behold means pay attention. Lo means really pay attention. This is deep. Lo, I have told you, these angels said, go and tell them. They departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear, great joy, and did run and bring the disciples' word. And as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, saying, all hell. And they came and held him by the feet. And what we're doing this morning, they worshipped him. They worshipped him. <laughs> then said Jesus said to them, Be not afraid. It's one thing when an angel says it, but another when the master says it. Go and tell my brethren. It's the first time that is used. He calls them his brethren. He calls them his disciples, his apostles. Even one place his friends, but for the first time in history, he calls us, the church, his brethren. That they go into Galilee, and there shall they see me. All right, here's the end. 
And now when they were going, behold, some of the watch came into the city. So they had evidently been aroused from their sleep. And showed to, to the chief priest. They did not go back to Pilate. Because they could have been put to death for this. All the things that were done. So I wonder, I wonder which group made them back to the city first. These soldiers that were afraid. Or these women that had taken time to worship Jesus. I suspect the soldiers did. But I don't know. And they take news back to these religious leaders as if they could be some help to them. Tell them all these things that were done. I, I, let me say one of the These religious leaders that they went to see were the same chief priest that when Jesus would heal a leper, he would say, tell no one, go to the priest in Jerusalem, because there's a cleansing we read about in the book of Leviticus, the exact cleansing that the lepers have to do. Go and show the priest. Their grandfathers, those priests, and great-grandfathers, great -grandfather, they had never had that before. Lepers had not been cleansed for hundreds and hundreds of years, maybe a thousand years, maybe since the time of Moses. Go and show so these chief priests knew that he was the Messiah. And when they had assembled them with the elders, and they're taking counsel, they gave large money, literally in the Greek, they gave much silver to the soldiers. They could not be bought off as cheaply as, as Judas. Say, say ye, now practice this, get this down. I know you guys are soldiers, not scholars, practice this. His disciples came by and I and stole him away while we slept. And if it's come to the governor's ears, we would persuade him and secure you. So they took the money and did as they were taught. See that word taught? They practiced it over and over. Here's our story. Let's make sure we got our story right. Over and over again, this is what happened. This is the lie that proves the resurrection is true. This is the lie that proves the resurrection is true. And this saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. I thought I'd do something this morning I hadn't, I'd never done before. That is just to give you a very brief rundown of the resurrection appearances as most scholars think they have. Number one, to Mary in the garden. Number two, to the other women as they're returning back to Jerusalem. Number three, to the to, on the road to Emmaus. Number four, to Peter in Jerusalem privately, just with Peter. Then in Jerusalem that evening to the ten that had met in the upper room without Judas. And of course, Thomas wasn't there. Then the following Sunday to the eleven disciples in the upper room. He says to Thomas, reach out your hand, put in your touch. We see that flesh and bone. He doesn't say flesh and blood, flesh and bone. I'm not a spirit, I'm real. To the seven disciples fishing at the Sea of Galilee. To the eleven apostles on the mountain. To more than 500 sometime later, to James. Here's where I disagree with most of the scholars. I think that you could put James up there on number six because I don't think he waited until weeks and weeks later to see his brother. When James talks about it, it appears, it seems like it had happened that day or the next day, very soon after he talked to his apostles. Number 11, to his disciples at his ascension. Number 12 to Stephen as he preached in the book of Acts. Number 13 to the Apostle Paul. Number 14 to John of the Isle of Patmos. Generation, I mean, uh, decades later. And then the next one, very soon, he will come again. Hallelujah. So we praise the Lord for that. That is our resurrection account. I asked Sister Carla she would come back to the piano. Brother David, Brother Jeremy, if they would come forward at this time, prepare the communion table.